Hello and welcome to another TLDR UK video. It seems that the UK is determined to tear itself apart at the moment, with Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland all at least discussing independence more seriously than ever. Scotland is the most notable example, whose citizens seem pretty enticed by the idea of leaving the United Kingdom and reuniting with old allies in the EU. It's not just Scotland though, other parts of the UK certainly seem receptive to rejoining Europe, with few areas being as keen as London. Which poses the question, is that even possible? Could London, the capital and economic heart of the country, leave the UK and rejoin the EU? Well, in this video we're going to be taking a look at whether London independence, sometimes shortened to Londependence, could ever really happen. Before we do though, you probably already know about our Countries with Shoes pin badges, but we have a new high quality enamel pin, the London with Shoes badge. We don't have the pin in stock yet, so enjoy this mock-up for the moment. But if you want to show your support and pride for your city, or if you just like London, then consider pre-ordering right now. It also helps us out. The link to the London pin and all of the others can be found in the description. Thanks for your support. So before you write an angry but somewhat justified comment accusing us of clickbait and telling us that London independence isn't happening, let us just say that we agree with you. London independence definitely isn't happening anytime soon, but we still thought it would be interesting to discuss an unlikely but interesting topic. So let's start with why London independence definitely isn't happening anytime soon. Well, for London independence to happen, a bare minimum of two things need to happen first. Firstly, the government would need to agree to a referendum, and secondly, the majority of Londoners would have to vote for it. And both of these things are deeply unlikely. Firstly, if the UK government won't grant Scotland a referendum on independence, then there's no chance they're granting one to London. Secondly, polling suggests that support for London independence among Londoners stands at about 5-10%, to which is a long way away from a majority. In fact, inferring from data on national identity and party membership, that's probably lower than support for Cornish independence. Assuming that separatism rises at the same level across the UK, then you expect Scotland to leave first, then Wales, then Northern Ireland, then Cornwall, and then finally London. So that's the short answer. No, London independence isn't happening anytime soon. But it's not impossible because there are certain trends that might make it slightly more likely in the long term. Firstly, the general separatist trend in the UK. Post-Brexit, support for independence has risen basically everywhere, and polling also shows that support for, say, Welsh independence increases when people are asked to assume that Scotland has already left the UK. So if any of these independence movements are successful, or even just popular, then there's reason to think that they'll increase separatist sentiment across the UK more generally. The second trend is London's economic divergence from the rest of the UK. Per capita, London is a lot wealthier than the rest of Britain. The latest data from 2018 put GDP per capita in London about £56,000, compared to £28,000 in the rest of the UK. And this gap is only growing. London's population is also growing at a faster rate than the rest of the UK, which is also why its share of the UK economy has grown even faster than you might expect. The reason this might make Londoners want independence more is that as the economic gap grows, Londoners' taxes end up subsidising the rest of the UK more than ever. According to latest ONS data, in 2018, London ran a fiscal surplus of £34.3 billion, which essentially means that £34 billion worth of London's tax revenues was spent elsewhere in the UK. If this continues to grow, then you can see how Londoners might just prefer to spend that money on themselves. The third trend is the rest of the UK's increasing apathy towards London. You might have noticed that it's become very politically unfashionable these days to be associated with London. I'm delighted to welcome the, the right honourable gentleman from his vantage point of exile in, uh, in Islington and uh, wish him all, the, all, all his spiritual home and wish him all the best uh, uh, in his, uh, his, his self-isolation. And, and I'm getting a bit fed up of saying this to them, but they really do now need to listen and make real changes and, and end the, the London-centric Labour Party that I have been in all my life. 
with both Labour and the Conservatives toying with moving their headquarters out of the capital, and the government even temporarily considering moving the House of Lords to York. We're not saying that this anti-London slant is justified or not justified, just that it definitely exists and seems to be growing. It's hard to know for sure because polling on this precise topic is scarce, but two polls conducted in 2014 and 2020 show a 5% rise in the number of people that think the government is too London-centric in that time frame. If tensions between London, the rest of the UK and the political class continue to rise, then this might make Londoners and non-Londoners alike much more likely to approve independence. So those are the three trends that make London pendants more likely in the future. But what would it actually look like? Well, there are basically two potential borders, the M25 and the administrative boundary of the Greater London Authority. And while it's not common, London wouldn't be alone in being completely surrounded by another state. San Marino and Lesotho, for example, are completely surrounded by Italy and South Africa respectively. However, neither San Marino nor Lesotho have anywhere near the number of access points as London would have, and around 800,000 people commute into London for work, so it will be a logistical nightmare to have any sort of border checks. Realistically then, London would have to be very much aligned with the rest of the UK, and that's essentially why London couldn't do a Singapore, and declare independence as a city-state before diverging into some sort of business-friendly low-tax haven. Also, the UK would have to move the Houses of Parliament, Civil Service and Number 10 somewhere else, presumably Manchester or Birmingham. London could keep the monarchy, so the Queen wouldn't necessarily have to move if she didn't want to. London also wouldn't have an army at first, but again that's not unheard of. Iceland and Costa Rica, for example, don't have any standing armies. Also, it's unlikely that the rest of the UK is going to be much of a military threat to an independent London, and if needed, the Met Police could always get involved. London would then also need to sort out a national anthem, national flag, and a national football team. Six out of London's 26-man Euro squad were born in London, though, so maybe that's a good start. That's all we're going to cover for today, but if you're interested in more detail, the practicality of how other city-states have done it and how London could practically leave the UK, then comment below your questions and suggestions and we might make a follow-up video. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, consider pre-ordering yourself one of those London pin badges. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.